Hey Rimfire and Steel Shooters, Carlos with a K, coming your way with the next episode of Mind in the Box. Now while there's a few changes to make in the stage overviews for Mind in the Box, we're moving on to the hardware that I selected for my main competition equipment. Now we're going to start with the Rimfire division and with the pistols I selected. If you're new to the channel, most of these videos for Mind in the Box approach aspects of steel challenge shooting that focus on the non-first time to experience shooters that want to improve from an A to M to GM levels. You also need to know that I started with the Rimfile Rifle Divisions for Steel Challenge. I love shooting the rifles. There's so much room for error than with a pistol. Now moving into the 22 pistols, I started with the Smith & Wesson Victory Performance Center and I liked it a lot. However, the modifications for the Victory were sparse, and so that led me to picking the model that I shoot now, which is the Vakortsen Black Mamba. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the stars of this video. First up is my first Black Mamba, which is actually a tungsten gray model. Uh, the purchase with prices before tax and fees was about $1,225, which I thought was a really good price. I already owned a Trigicon SRO that I plan to put on my carry optics pistol, but I hadn't gotten around to selecting the pistol yet, so I put it on the Mamba, and I liked the look a lot. And the performance was good too. Next I added the Stripling thumb rest, and shot the pistol like that to get Grandmaster within a few months. Next I added the tandem cross grips. The whole grips were okay, but I got used to the tandem cross grips from the Performance Center pistol, so I decided to stick with that grip. The final change I made was to add a tandem cross cornerstone thumb safety. And that's the way the pistol currently sits. Mainly a stock pistol with a few upgrades to ensure consistent grip placement, which is critical when you want to shoot a pistol fast. You gotta be consistent with the grip. After watching a few shooters at major matches who had issues with their pistol drop out because a firing pin broke, they had an extractor fall out, or XYZ thing happened. You name it, Murphy's Law says something can happen. So I decided to pick up a second Mamba. This one I found on a local gun trader site and it came with five magazines, already had a Seymour optic, and also came with a few Vorkorts and maintenance accessories that I needed. So I traded a couple guns for my second Mamba. The all black model you see here. One day I'll get this one Cerakoted and customized, but for now, it's just all in black. Now, I like the tungsten gray with the black accessory look better, but I also owned it longer. So to keep that one looking good, I moved the optic over to the black black mamba, and I shoot this one in open division primarily. I decided to set up the gray model as my iron sight gun, and not just use it as a backup. I added all the modifications to both guns to make them the same as, as far as the lower grip module. And for the iron sights, I decided on the rear fire sights from Tandem Cross with the ghost ring rear sight instead of a blade. I just didn't like the way the blade, for me at different distances, the blade just didn't give me the same perspective for up close as far away and allow me to adjust accordingly for my hits. They were just so minute of adjustments. So instead the ghost ring gives me the same view as a dot. And so far, I've only shot this configuration in a couple matches, so I'm still getting used to it. I moved up to the A division though, and so I'm happy with that. For the front sights, it's the original Vorkorsen sight with a red fiber optic instead of green. I usually use red lenses in my shooting glasses, so I like the red fiber over the green when possible. Now why this pistol? And the trigger pull is excellent. And trigger pull with a pistol is critical. I love the reset, the weight of the pull. In addition, I like the takedown of this pistol to clean and maintenance it. It's so easy and yet functions great. This pistol is really lightweight, but with the front comp, it stays relatively flat when shooting, but still has a grunt when fired. It's not quiet. It's a little snappy, but easy to control. I like the looks, the angles, the snakeskin patterns, and although I believe I might prefer the aluminum grip frame over the polymer, currently at my skill level is still below what this gun is capable of. I like the way the bolt integrates a charging handle. 
and any changes upcoming possibly is to switch from the Trigicon SRO back to a Seymour Railway just to add a little bit more weight towards the front of the gun. I tried it with a Seymour and I actually got better times on a few stages. So I plan to revisit that setup soon, but I just like the look of the Trigicon. I usually sight in these pistols between 25 and 30 feet for rimfire. That's my go-to distance for steel challenge. It's a little low up close between 5 to 10 yards, excuse me, 15 to 18 feet, it's usually perfect. And at 25 to 30 feet, it's usually just a little high. So that way it gives me time for the bullet to drop back down when shooting long stages like speed option and outer limits. I don't foresee myself changing pistols anytime soon. Um, this will be my still challenge unless I get a sponsor who provides me with an equivalent performing pistol. Uh, thanks to watch. Uh, keep your ejector clean. It's a pain to remove, and I'll do a video on this soon, but I usually clean it around every three months or every eight to ten matches. Unless there's a major match, then I do the entire bolt right before the match. I clean the comp. Uh, residue does build up in the comp, and I usually clean it again about every eight to ten matches. But normally you could see how the buildup's tracking, and it's uh, fairly easy with the Verkortsen, um comp cleaning tool. Uh, the final thing to really check on these is to check the hammer spring. I usually do this about every two matches. I press on the finger, I press the, I press the hammer down with my fingers, and if it feels gritty or there's play, uh, I usually take it all the way down, and most likely the hammer spring housing has come unscrewed, and the spring is probably loose in there. Uh, this happened on my first Mamba after the first six to ten matches, and I simply took it apart, put some Loctite on it. Since then, I haven't had a problem and I probably run it through another 20 matches since then. The ammunition I use with these is high velocity ammunition, CCI, mini mag, 40 grain, round nose. It's the only ammo I use for rimfire across all the divisions. I found them to be extremely reliable in these pistols. If you have any other questions, comments, or ideas on some changes you made to a Mamba to make it better, let me know in the comments. I tried several pistols over the years. The only one I would shoot again is the Smith & Wesson Victory Performance Center with the carbon fiber barrel. Super accurate, really light on the front end, all the weight pretty much sits in the grip, so easy to maneuver around and stop quickly on targets. But it just didn't have the look or the feel of the Black Mamba. So when a shooter likes what they shoot, it boosts your confidence, and that's key when you want to go fast. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll keep me doing more videos. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, KBA, keep being awesome.